Welcome to the fifth part of the tutorial series on how to make tic-tac-toe game in Unity. We now need to turn this foundation behavior into a game. To do this we will need to move the control into a central place by creating a game controller. The game controller will set the starting player's side, either X or O, keep track of whose turn it is and when a button is clicked, send the current player's side, check for a winner and either change sides or end the game. We will need a new script to do this, so let's create one attached to its own game object. Create a new empty game object using create create empty. Rename this game object game controller. With the game controller selected, reset the game controller's transform component. Click on the add component. Type game controller. Click on new script. Then finally click on create and add. File the game controller script in the scripts folder. Open the game controller script for editing. Again, we are using the UI tool set, so we need the appropriate namespace. Add the UI namespace to the top of the script. Using Unity Engine.UI. The game controller script will need to know about all of the buttons in the game so it can check their state and determine if that has been a win. For this, the script should hold a collection of all of the grid space buttons. We will want to check the button's text component for the player side to see if there are three matching values in a row, so let's make an array of the type text. Remove all of the sample code from the class. Create a public text array called button list. Public text button list. The square brackets after the type indicate that this variable is an array. The final script should look like this, save this script. Return to Unity. Now that we have created this button list array, we must populate it with the text components of our grid space buttons. Remember, order here is important. It is also important that we link the child text game objects to the button list array, not the parent grid space game objects. One way of populating the button list array on the game controller in the inspector is to set the size of the array to 9 and then drag each text game object, one at a time, into the array. This is a bit tedious and time-consuming. There is, however, an easier way to do this, and it involves locking the inspector window and dragging all game objects at once into the array. Select the game controller game object in the hierarchy. In the upper right of the inspector window, click the lock button. What this does is prevent the inspector window from changing focus from current selection, in this case the game controller. If we didn't do this, when, in the next step, we select the child text game objects, the focus of the inspector would change to these child text game objects and we wouldn't be able to drag them into the array on the game controller. It's also worth noting that we can open multiple inspector windows, locking only the ones we want. This allows for complex views of various game objects in the hierarchy and project windows. Open the 9 grid space buttons in the inspector using the turn down arrow. Using and click on Windows or and click on the Mac, select only the child text game objects from every grid space game object. Drag these onto the locked inspector for the game controller game object and drop them on the button list name above the size field. When the dragging cursor is in the correct position, a small plus icon will appear next to the cursor. If you miss the location, the cursor will change to show a circle and slash icon indicating the drop will fail. Successfully dropping the 9 text game objects will automatically size the button list array and add all of the items to the array. In this particular case, it is important to check the order now. These should be in order automatically, but it's worth checking to make sure. Select each element in order by clicking on the element field. This should highlight the game object linked as a reference. Each element in the button list array should correspond in order to the correct game object. Element 0 should be associated with grid space, element 1 should be associated with grid space, 1, element 2 should correspond with grid space, 2, and so on. If this is correct, unlock the inspector window. Save the scene. Now, for the player to take a turn, the grid space button needs to inform the game controller that a move has been made and win conditions need to be checked.
This means that the grid space button needs to have a reference to the game controller component. This can be held in a local variable with of the type game controller. One way to associate the game controller component with each of the grid space buttons in the scene would be to make this variable public and populate this public property in the inspector for each grid space button instance in the scene. We can't make the association between the grid space prefab in the project view and the instance of the game controller in the scene, as the assets cannot hold references instances. All this dragging can be a bit tedious, but it also opposes one of the basic workflow related to using a prefab, we can't simply drop the prefab into the scene and have it just work. Another way to associate the game controller component with each of the grid space buttons in the scene is to do it in code. Now, if we do this in code, we could have each grid space button search the scene's hierarchy for the game controller when they are first created at the start of the game. The game controller, however, already has a list of all of the grid space buttons in the button list array. In our case, I feel it would be better for the game controller to push the reference to itself to the buttons directly. To push the references to the grid space buttons, the grid space script will need a local variable with of the type game controller and a public function to set it. Open the grid space script for editing. Add a new private variable to hold a reference to the game controller. Private game controller game controller. Create a new public function which returns void that can take a game controller as a parameter and assign it to the game controller variable as a reference. Public void set game controller reference. Game controller controller. Game controller equals controller. The final script should look like this. Save this script. Open the game controller script for editing. Create a new function that returns void called set game controller reference on buttons. Void set game controller reference on buttons. This is best done with a for loop that iterates through all of the elements in the button list array. In set game controller reference on buttons write code that loops through all of the buttons. This is best done with a for loop that iterates through all of the elements in the button list array. For int i equals zero, i button list dot length i plus plus. The loop is easy. Loop through the entire length of the button list, but the button list is referencing the child text game objects and we need to get a hold of the grid space component on the parent of the text game objects. How can we do this? There is a convenient call we can make to get component in parent. With this we can give get component in parent a type, in our case grid space, and it will return that component if it exists. Add code to check each item in the button list and set the game controller reference in the grid space component on the parent game object. Button list I dot get component in parent, dot set game controller reference, this. The keyword this refers to this class, or the class that the code is written in. By passing in this to set game controller reference we are passing in a reference to this instance of the class. Each grid space instance will use this to set their reference to the game controller. The function set game controller reference on buttons now needs to be called when the game starts. It an awake function that returns void. Call set game controller reference on buttons. Void awake. Set game controller reference on buttons. Now that the buttons know about the game controller and have a proper reference to it, we want the buttons to do two things, get the player side from the game controller before the button set the text value so the buttons know what symbol to place in their grid space and, once they've done that, inform the game controller that the turn is now over so that the game controller can check the win conditions and either end the game or change the side taking the turn. To do this, we need to set up additional functionality in the game controller script. Create a new empty public function that returns string called get player side. Public string get player side. Return. To successfully compile, get player side must return some string value, so we will add a dummy line here for now returning. Create a new empty public function that returns void called end turn. Public void end turn. Debug.log, end turn is not implemented. Note how, at this stage in our development, we have created two essentially empty functions.
We know the basic idea of what we want these functions to do but we have not yet developed the content. We can fill these out later, but by creating these empty but viable functions, we can continue our development in another part of our game without getting lost in a tangle of other code we are not yet ready to think about in detail. Both of these functions do have indicators that they are not complete if we ever run the game to test. Get player side returns, and end turn prints aligned to the console warning us that end turn is not implemented. This way it will be clear that we will need to go back and work on these functions later. The final script should look like this. Save the script, with these two new public functions in game controller we need to make use of them in grid space. Open the grid space script for editing. In the function set space. Change the first line so that button text dot text is assigned the value of get player side directly from the current value in game controller. Button text dot text equals game controller dot get player side. In the function set space. As the last line in the function, add a line calling end turn. Game controller dot end turn. At this point, it is worth remembering that code in a function is executed in order, from top to bottom, so by placing the call to end turn at the end of the function, we know it will be called last, after all of the other business in set space is done. We now no longer need a local variable for player side. This value is now taken directly from the game controller. Remove the line defining the variable player side. Public string player side. The final script should look like this. Save the script. Return to Unity. Enter play mode. Test by clicking any of the spaces. We should see that everything now works, at least technically. It may look bad that the spaces are getting a, from the game controller and every turn our console tells us end turn is not implemented, but the player side value is now coming from the game controller and when the player takes their move by clicking a button, control of the game is handed back to the game controller to process the turn. We have now taken our foundation game play behavior away from the button elements themselves and expanded it so we now have overall control from a central point. In the next lesson we will test the game for a win.